Good morning, True Life Church. Thank you for being with us uh, online today. I, I hate that we can't be together in person, but I'm so glad that you decided to join us online this morning. I hope you're having a great Sunday morning. Why don't you take just a minute and share this. If you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, share this with some of your friends, some of your family. See if you can get somebody to join you and uh, maybe start a watch party if you know how to do that on Facebook. That would be great. Uh, why don't you say good morning to some people in the comment section there. Just take a moment on Facebook or YouTube. Say good morning to your TLC family. Say good morning to somebody else you see there online. That would be great. Well, listen, we're going to open up this morning and uh, take some needs to God in prayer. Uh, and if you've got a need this morning, why don't you take a minute, type that out in the comments, and we're going to all pray together here in just a moment. We're going to continue to remember uh, all the families impacted by uh, COVID-19. We're going to pray for all of those down in the Gulf area, South Louisiana, that were impacted uh, by Hurricane Laura. So let's remember a number of families, number of churches impacted there. We're going to take those needs and many needs in our church family. Uh, we're going to take all those before the Lord this morning. Why don't you join me? If you're, if you're watching in your living room or, or in your kitchen, no matter where you're at, you're watching online, you see some names that are being put in the comment section right now. Why don't we go together uh, in, in prayer and take these needs before the Lord. God, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your many blessings. Lord, you see every need represented here online this morning. You know what needs to be done in each and every situation. And I pray, God, that you would move and that you would minister, that you would touch, that you would heal, and that you would deliver like only you're able, God. I thank you for your goodness and I thank you for your mercy. Touch and move like only you can. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Man. Well, again, thanks for being here this morning, and uh, we're going to take our offering online. We did this in, uh, in COVID, and so we've got a little bit of practice when we were shut down. Uh, so there's a, a number going to come on the screen. You can text an amount, uh, or you can go to our website, tlcjoshua.com or truelifejoshua.com. You can click the Give button in the top right corner. Uh, you can also text an amount to 817 Four four zero three seven four zero. I know that you'll be richly blessed, and uh, we're able to do everything that we can do around TLC. We do things like put these services online and and take care of issues that we have on campus, uh, all because of uh, the way that you give and support this church. So while you're taking a moment uh, to give online, I'm going to give you just a few quick updates on some announcements. Uh, and about what's going on here at TLC. Uh, first of all, uh, tomorrow, or today rather, today starts our 14 days of prayer and fasting from today through the 26th. So what we're asking is that the entire church family uh, would be, be on a media fast. Take a break from media. Take a break from the news. Uh, obviously, you have to be online, some of us, for our job, and so I want you to do that. Uh, but I want us to basically uh, take in only uh, spirit-filled, only Christian-based media. So, uh, you know, take in the Word of God, uh, worship, and, and, and uh, you know, if you want to watch some sermons or something like that. So, so do that for the next couple of weeks as we kind of clear our hearts and clear our minds for what God would say to us. And as a reminder, uh, just, just a couple weeks away is our Power and Demonstration Conference. That's, again, September the 26th and 27th, Saturday night, 6 o'clock, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And yes, we do expect that everything will be back up and operational. I'm praying everything will be back ready for next Sunday. That's what we're believing for. Uh, we'll move to the gym if we have to. I'm ready to get back together. Uh, I don't want to do an extended time away from our TLC family. and so. Uh, but we believe everything should be in order for Power and Demonstration Conference. I know some have asked about that. Uh, and then tomorrow night, Somebody put in the comments, if you were here in person, I would say turn to somebody and say tomorrow night at 7 o'clock we will have a time of 
prayer together as a church family. Now, obviously, our sanctuary building is closed, so we're going to meet in our banquet room in the Family Life Center. In our banquet room, uh, we have chairs spread out in there. Uh, we'll have some music going. We're going to kick off uh, prayer with a word. Uh, with, a, with, a, with a quick prayer request and a word, and then we're going to pray together. Listen, uh, I know that this weekend kind of got thrown a curveball, uh, but we're not letting it disrupt what God wants to do in our church and in our families. Amen. And so uh, we're going to start our, our fasting today. We're going to start praying together as a church tomorrow night. And now one week from uh, tomorrow, uh, following Monday night, we'll meet together again. So the next two Monday nights, seven o'clock, we'll meet together in the banquet room for a time of focused prayer together. I know that will be great. Let me give you a quick update on uh, the fire situation here uh, at TLC on campus. So uh, the cleaning continues uh, by Serve Pro. They're doing a great job there. Uh, we were able to find the electrical lines uh, that were damaged or cut through the, the, during the demolition. We were able to find those, uh, both ends of those lines, so the repairs can start on that ASAP. We're hoping uh, tomorrow afternoon or Tuesday morning that those will be uh, begin and begin to be repaired and get our, get our electricity turned on. Uh, we did, I think I've already mentioned this, we did open the claim with our insurance company, so we're waiting for a um, claim number to be assigned, an adjuster, to be assigned. What we hope to happen this week, we hope to get the electrical lines repaired, uh, continue maybe even and, and get close to finishing our cleaning, uh, continue the damage assessment once the power comes back on. Uh, when we looked and saw where the lines ran, I don't expect there to be much damage in, this, in the uh, equipment uh, in our sanctuary itself. Uh, but in the other parts of the building, the other AC units that were on that same panel, those will have to be assessed uh, for any damage there. Uh, now listen, uh, this coming Wednesday, midweek, uh, that is still on. Everything will occur in the Family Life Center, okay? And so uh, Celebrate Recovery will be moving over. So some of the rooms may be adjusted. Uh, and so we'll be putting that out, a notice for where classes are being held, uh, in which rooms, but, uh, but we will have midweek this week in our Family Life Center. Uh, and as I mentioned, power demonstration is still on. And then of course, our prayer and fasting is still on. So I believe God is continuing to do great things even when we have a curveball thrown at us like we had this week. Amen. Well, this morning, I want, to, I want to talk to you about something very quickly. I won't be long this morning, but, but uh, we're going to continue in our Restoring Victory series. Restoring Victory. Now, we've got a modified service. We're online. Uh, and to be real honest with you, we've got a modified message. Um, I had a, a different, different uh, message in mind for this installment of our Restoring, our Restoring Victory series, but I just felt to share something a little bit different with you online today. Um, and, and yeah, it was uh, partly due to the recent activities on our campus. I hope that it helps somebody. Uh, maybe your pastor is the only person that needs to hear this word this morning. I'm sure some of our friends in South Louisiana uh, will find this as encouraging as well. Now listen, it is... Uh, it is a little bit disheartening that right after we get back to a, you know, what many would call kind of a semi-normal environment from the impact of, of a global pandemic, here we sit at home yet again, one more week due to a fire in our sanctuary building. But you know, the truth is when the enemy or life or just a given situation throws a problem your way, when, when a problem comes my way, I'm going to continue to declare the word that I'm going to declare this morning. And that is one key to restoring victory in your life is to simply never give up. And that's what I want to talk to you about just for the next few moments. Let's pray over this word today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for your love and for your compassion. I'm asking right now, God, that you cleanse our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that you open our hearts, open our ears to hear your word, God, and let us be encouraged. Let us be lifted up, God. Let us, let us be restored 
and our faith this morning, God. Your word is anointed, and I pray that you anoint my lips to deliver it. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, one person said, the one way to get to heaven is to turn right and go straight. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really simple. Living for God and making heaven home, becoming a born-again believer. You dedicate your life to God, and then you don't look back. You don't stop. And whatever you do, you never, ever give up. First of two points I want to make this morning is don't ever give up on yourself. One way to make sure that we restore victory in our own life is to never give up on ourselves. Well, pastor, how do I how do I do that? How do I how do I make sure that I don't give up on myself? Well, go ahead and fix in your mind, set in your heart this morning that you are going to mess up. That you are going to fail. Go ahead and prepare to fall short. Well, that don't sound that encouraging. That doesn't sound that optimistic. No, but it's a key to restoring victory, to maintaining victory in your life is, is preparing and saying, I'm not perfect. I'm going to fall short and I'm going to mess up. You see, I promise you, every one of us in the True Life family, everybody watching online today, every one of us here is going to sin at some point in our life. Most of us before the sun sets tonight, if we're honest with ourselves, So go ahead and prepare. But let me tell you just how dirty your enemy fights, just, just how disgusting the enemy of your soul really is. You see, you'll be, he'll tempt you. You'll be tempted by your flesh. You'll be tempted by Satan himself. He'll tempt you with something that he knows is appealing to you. And then when you fall to that temptation, when you fall to getting angry, when you fall to that pride, when you fall to that lust, when you fall to those thoughts, when you fall to, to messing up, to jealousy, to whatever it may be, that's your weak spot. When you fall to that, then the enemy will begin to beat you up, bring on condemnation for giving in to your weakness. You see, God is prepared for us to make mistakes. It's one of the main reasons that Jesus Christ came, shed his blood at the cross, because no amount of our sin equals up to the amount of grace that God has for you. Paul told the church in Rome, in Romans chapter 5, the end of verse 20, he says, but as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. You're used to hearing it in the King James Version put this way, but where sin doth abound, grace does much more abound. You see, God has provided healing. He has provided forgiveness for our mistakes, and He does not expect them to expect us to use them to live any way that we want. He doesn't expect for us to use His His grace as a license to sin and live like heathens, but He does expect us to maintain a victory in our heart, in our soul because of his grace and because of his mercy. See, as I mentioned, one of the enemy's greatest weapons is self-condemnation. What does that exactly mean, Pastor? It, it means condemning oneself by your own judgment. We refer to it often, as I said before, as beating yourself up. And the devil wants you to think that when you mess up, you're no good. That when you mess up, you shouldn't even try to live for God any longer. That when you make a mistake, you ought to just throw in the towel, lay down in defeat, and call it over. I believe somebody has battled with that this week, maybe even this morning. But you know, one of our greatest examples in the scripture of, of someone overcoming self-condemnation is Simon Peter. And self-condemnation can be worse for those who have the furthest to fall. So if you're watching online this morning, and if you hold a position in church, maybe you're a pastor, maybe you're a preacher, maybe you're a minister, maybe you're in ministry right here, a leader right here at True Life, condemnation can be toughest 
for those who have the furthest to fall. You see, Simon Peter was one of the first 12 to be called among, along with his brother Andrew from his life as a fisherman to follow Jesus Christ. Some historians believe that the Gospel of Mark was actually dictated by Peter. This is the man who walked on the water, water with Jesus. He, he was given the revelation of Jesus Christ by God the Father. He, he was called to save all Gentiles. He also declared to Jesus that he would never leave him regardless. Just a few hours after making that declaration, the Gospel of Mark records in the 14th chapter it tells of Peter's denial. It says he even called down curses, declaring that he did not know Jesus. You see, at this point, Scripture tells us that he broke down and he began to weep after denying him three times. You see, I think it's safe to say this morning that self-condemnation set in pretty hard on our friend Simon Peter. But Jesus, he didn't give up on Peter. While Peter was feeling low, beating up himself, John records in chapter 21 of his gospel that Jesus meets Peter on the beach, confirms his love for him three different times. And you know, the apostle Peter went on to preach the first apostolic message that we find in the book of Acts in chapter 2. If you think that you've messed up too bad, just remember, an apostle who denies Jesus Christ is restored to preach the greatest message ever recorded in history. You see, the key this morning is this simple. Don't ever give up. When you fall, just get back up. Pastor, I have fallen this morning. We'll get back up. Pastor, I, fall, I, I, I fell this weekend. Get back up. Pastor, I messed up this week over and over again. We'll just get back up. Just keep getting back up. Don't give up on yourself. Whatever you do, don't give up on yourself. The second point I want to make this morning is take that same grace and mercy, that same attitude towards yourself, and show it towards others. Don't ever give up on others. Don't ever give up on God. Don't ever give up in a given situation that you find yourself in. Just like we shouldn't give up on ourselves, we should always get back up. You see, we should never give up on other people. We should always help other people back up when they fall. I promise you someday you'll be in a position where you'll want somebody to reach out to you and help you get back up. You know, since just in the last couple of days, since we've announced that we had this fire on our campus, We've had, I've had a number of pastors reach out to me. One is Pastor Dale Wilbanks of First United Methodist Church right here in Joshua. He reached out and he said, hey, you can use our sanctuary if need be. Sorry to hear about this. What can we do? Let me tell you, my friends, that's, that's incredible. I've had pastors from around the city, pastors from out of state reach out. What can we do? I'm grateful people reached out. But you know, because of your support, because of your giving, just last week when Hurricane Laura hit South Louisiana, we gave, we sent supplies. You heard me talk about that uh, while we were in service together, I believe last Sunday. You always want to help other people back up because your time may be coming sooner than you realize when you want somebody else to help you back up. We should never give up on God. We should never give up on the promises that we find in God's word. You should never give up on other people. You see, God has a plan for every one of his children. Don't bail on that plan. Don't write people off. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, Paul says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. 
Oh, how many people in our life, in our eyes, they have faults. In our minds, they have problems. In our opinions, they're really messed up. Paul is saying they're without fault in God's eyes. If they have no fault in the eyes of God Almighty, then why should they have fault in our eyes? When people mess up, don't fault them, forgive them. Don't fault them, forgive them. You need to remember that your purpose precedes your problem, that your destiny defies your current dilemma. Do you know that how we react to others when they fall, that dictates our position and place in God in some degree? Proverbs chapter 24, beginning in verse 16. One part of this scripture we like to quote a lot when we talk about not giving up and, and staying in there. I believe it's a New Living Translation, puts it this way, the godly man trips seven times, but they'll get up again. That's the part we like. I, I'll fall seven times, but I will arise. I'll fall seven times, but I'll get back up. One disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked, he said. But verse 17 says, don't rejoice when your enemies fall. Don't be happy when they stumble. Talking about your enemies Verse 18, for the Lord will be displeased with you and will turn his anger away from them. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes that, that word can cut to my heart. People that I have a problem with, people that I think you need to get their just deserves when, when they have an issue, they have a problem. This flesh wants to say, yeah, that's, that's right. That's what you deserve. That's what you get. But the word of God is saying, don't do that. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't rejoice when your enemy stumbles. Because if you do, God will be displeased with you. You know, the truth of the matter is just in these three short voices, verses, it says the righteous may or the godly man may fall seven times, but will get up again. So, and then he says, don't rejoice when your enemy falls. And so God is saying, I want you to get back up. And then I want you to turn around and help somebody else get back up, even if that person is your enemy. Some things I want us to consider this morning. I want to bring this a little bit closer to home. Some examples, some things, people that you have heard of. During its first year, Coca-Cola only sold 400 bottles of Coke. A lot of people would have just given up on that drink and moved right on. Dr. Seuss was rejected by 23 different publishers before finding the 24th that would publish his book. I bet those 23 are kicking themselves after, after publishing all of his books. Babe Ruth held the record for the most home runs at one point, but he also held the record for the most strikeouts. Legendary basketball player Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. He was quoted as saying, Michael Jordan said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. He said, I have failed over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. It is said that Thomas Edison performed over 50,000 experiments before he succeeded in producing a storage battery. We might assume the famous inventor would have had some serious doubts along the way, but when he was asked if he'd ever became discouraged or working so long with no results, Thomas Edison just simply said, Results? Why, I know 50,000 ways that don't work. Now, that's a new spin on things. That's a new way to look at things. The great Winston Churchill seemed dull as a youth, and his father thought that he might be incapable of earning a living in England. Thomas Edison's first teacher described him as adult, and his father almost was convinced that he was a dunce. Albert Einstein's parents feared, their, feared that their child was dull. He performed so badly in high school courses except mathematics that a teacher asked him to drop out. You see, by people's normal standards, each one of these should have given up. 
in most people's eyes, when you hear these stories without their names, if you didn't know how these stories end, you would have thought these people should simply have given up. And the true, the same is true for a lot of saints. The same is true for a lot of children of God. We think when I don't perform to a certain level, when I don't, my life does not measure up to this bar. When I don't have all the details for my life worked out just like I need, when I don't have all the details for my ministry in line just like I need, then, then I just simply need to lay it down. I need to walk away. Pastor, I need to take a break. Pastor, I just need to get away for a little while. Pastor, I just need to stop. I need to look for something else. I need to do something. I need to quit ministry. I need to quit church. I need to quit God. I need to quit because I'm just not getting it right. No, 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 that's not the case. You need to have victory restored in your heart and your mind this morning and determining your soul. You're never, ever going to give up. We need to take the words of the Old Testament prophet, Micah, and we need to hide them deep in our soul. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8, a very familiar portion of Scripture. As I begin to wrap up this morning, I want to read this one verse of Scripture and bring it home to us today. Micah 7 and 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. You know, I don't think that the Lord would be too mad at us if we improvised a couple of words in this scripture this morning and just brought it a little closer to home. I think it would be fitting for somebody to say, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, when a pandemic plagues the earth, for I shall arise. Rejoice not against me when there's civil unrest in my country, for I shall arise. Rejoice not against me when there's economic crash the stock market for I shall arise. Can I get even a little bit closer to home for you and for me and for our TLC family this morning? Rejoice not against me when our church building catches on fire for I shall arise. We shall arise. Rejoice not against me when I have to be on church online service one more time for we shall meet again. <laughs> not in that glorious morning, but but on a Sunday morning back on our campus. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy, I shall arise. You know, the truth of the matter is, true life, when we make the decision to give up, when we make the decision to say, I'm done, then what we're doing is we're telling Jesus Christ Calvary was not enough. When we walk away, when we turn our back on God, we're telling God Almighty the price that you paid on the cross wasn't enough to cover my mistakes. They weren't enough to cover my sin. Your blood was not enough. When we don't forgive other people, what you're really saying is, God, the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, was not enough to help that person, to forgive that person, to wash that person, to cleanse that person. You're not going to succeed in the way that you want to in every area of life. You're not going to succeed in every area of ministry. You're not going to succeed in every area area of your walk with God. You're not going to succeed in every way as a parent, in every way as a spouse, in every way as a son or a daughter, in every way in, in any part of your life. You're not going to be 100% successful. You are not perfect. But you can give 110% in effort. You can make up your mind 100% to not give up. Don't stop trying. Don't stop moving forward. So remember, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on others. And never give up on God. Here's what I want us to do as we close out this morning. If you've got something that you feel that you struggle with in life and you're comfortable sharing it publicly, I want you to type in the comments right now. I'm not giving up on 
my job. I'm not giving up on my kids. I'm not giving up on you fill in the blank. If you don't, if you don't feel like being specific, then just simply put out there, I'm not giving up. I'm, I'm, I'm staying the course. I'm going to hold on. I'm determining today that I'm going to not give up. I'm going to let victory be restored by simply not giving up. I hope this was a blessing to you today. I want us to pray together before we close out this morning. Father, I thank you for your precious word. I thank you, God, for each person that has joined us online today. And I pray, God, right now that you let this word resonate in the depths of our soul and help us, God, to hold to your promise, to hold to your grace, to hold to your mercy, and to determine in the depths of our hearts, in the depths, the recesses of our soul, to determine to never, ever give up, to not give up on ourselves, to not give up on others, and to never give up on you. I thank you for each person that joined us online. I thank you for each person that's watching this, whether we're watching it live this morning or later in the week. I pray, God, that you help us, be with us, put your hand upon us. Use us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Let everything we do in our life bring you glory and bring you honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We love each and every one of you. I hope you have a great Sunday afternoon. And don't forget, we'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the Family Life Center for a time of focus, fasting, and prayer together with our TLC family. Love each and every one of you. God bless.